What's up guys? Welcome back to this shop mini RC. I'm Ken and today we are going to look at some stuff. We're going to be building uh, a rig. I'm not going to do a full build video here. I'll just kind of touch on some stuff. We have some Mia stuff. We got the Mia's uh, injection molded nylon ripper chassis. So we're going to do one of those up. We got some Nex racing shocks. Those are the reservoir oil fields. We got some fear tech stuff. We also have some Opie factory. Uh, they do 3, 3D printed stuff, but the most important thing for this build that they have done is a flat skid, like a um, lower CG basically tucks the TRX skid in so that it's level with the chassis on the bottom. Uh, so you don't have the, the transmission and skid kind of hanging out the bottom, which is what we're going to need for this build. Uh, so let's get into it. So we'll start with looking at the Opie factory stuff. One of the first things that we have is a TRX4M skid that mounts an FCX24 transmission and shift servo. So that's gonna be cool for a different project. Then we have this uh, trailer. It's essentially for those little mini jet boats. We're gonna build that, show that off. And then this right here is that low CG skid. Here's the instructions for it. There's two different ways to mount up the little spacers. One is for factory rails, which is the thinner ones if you're gonna put in a C-channel. And then the other is for uh, like a flat rail type thing or this chassis for the Mias. And then next, we're going to be looking at the Furitech Cedar motor with the uh, all-metal transmission for the TRX-4M. This motor is awesome. Great low speed, great high speed. It's got 12 poles. Uh, one of the best in-runner motors I've ever used for a brushless, sensorless motor. And like I said, all-metal gears in this transmission. Um, very quality. It'll be just an easy drop into the skid plate. And then it's all greased up. All the bearings in there. Bearings grease, no bushings. Seems good. Going to love this thing. It's going to be awesome. Fits right on our skid here. Again, you can see the skid has the spacers so we can mount it much higher up into the chassis. So it's basically going to sit just like so, which is nice and flush. And uh, we just barely have room in there for the motor. So that's good that that fits still. Um, I mean, there's, there's some space. Once it's bolted up in there straight, you'll be able to see a little better. But there, there's... There's enough space in there um, so for even just a little bit bigger motor if you wanted to go that route. Now, one of the reasons that we need this super low skid is because we're doing this. We're getting crazy with it. We're going to flip some portals. These are the Mias DYI or build your own portals. They essentially use the stock housings. So these are stock housings on the front and rear. And then you just bolt the new C-hubs on, bolt your new portal housings on. And uh, they are way wide. I mean, way wide. <laughs> and uh, yeah, kind of cool. Because they're so wide, I felt like I want to do something different. What are we going to do that's kind of crazy? Because that's <laughs> that's really wide. Um, but we've decided to flip it. We're probably going to go with some bigger tires. These are 1.2s. These are uh, Mias 1.2 wheels. And then the tires that come with them. And we'll probably get some little bit larger tires just so we have a little more clearance because once you start to squish, you're going to be close. And I don't want to be rubbing on the ground too bad uh, while we're trying to crawl a little bit. Again, this is not really going to be like a, a rock crawler. It's more going to be for like sandstone. We have red rocks. And out at red rocks, there's not a lot of like chunky rock. It's more mostly flat sandstone, right? So I just need to be low CG. And um, yeah, plus... I think it's just cool. We also have a uh, KYX brass diff cover here. Shout out to that. And uh, yeah, should be kind of cool. We'll figure it out. We're going to do the flat servo or the you know horizontally mounted servo. We'll get that all together. We're going to have to trim these. At least we're trimming only a stock housing versus trimming like a Triel or a Vitavon or something like that. Um, yeah, all the stuff that came with our Ripper chassis to do the steering and the servo. So let me get more of this together and we'll come back. So I plan on just using stock links here. Um, one thing I've noticed, and I pulled off this other spacer here so we could see better. The um, stock links are hitting right on this part of the skid. So there's no reason for this skid part to be here, I guess, other than really, that's just kind of where a a screw goes but then we have the spacer so the screw can go there but we don't need this extra little tab here so to help kind of clean that up i'm just going to trim this tab off that way this link isn't rubbing on the tab because these are going to be pushed out so you can see when i put them down they naturally 
are squeezing in, but once I get them on the axle, they're gonna be like this. So that's gonna be a lot of rubbing and binding. Also, I can feel when I turn them side to side, there's a little bit of rubbing underneath the screw mount. So I'm probably gonna try to clean that out just a little bit as well. Um, with any 3D printed parts, there's usually work that needs to be done. Plus when you're doing kind of crazy custom stuff, um, yeah, they don't know what the tolerances are gonna be, what kind of links you're gonna use. And uh, yeah, plus if you're gonna use, like if we're gonna use these, I guess it'd be this one, goes this way. Then you would need to try to keep that probably because your screw is definitely going into into there. Although, oh, nah, you should be fine. Either way, I think we, we're fine without this tab. That tab is on the stock. Like here's a stock one. Well, not stock, but stock shaped. And actually, it's not there at all. So I don't know why why there's the extra tab there. Maybe just for extra reinforcement. I don't know. I don't think we need it though. We're gonna cut it off. Ta-da! So now you can see, definitely have more, more angle there, more triangulation, which is important. And now when I turn it side to side, I can feel this portion Underneath is just rubbing a little, so we're going to clean that out too. And bam, there you go. Now it's nice and free. You can see that it just flops around in there. Right, I'm barely touching it. Moves just fine side to side, whereas this side, it's not so free. And you have to like, you can, you have to try to turn it and you can feel binding in there. So all it took is just a little tiny bit of just cleaning it out just a little bit. And now we are in a way better spot. Now, one of the downsides to this type of setup where you're basically sitting super flush with the bottom of the skid is that you have to remove the entire skid to get access to your lower links because your lower links are covered. You can see here there's a, uh, a hole cut out so that you can put the screw in through this plate, um, but that's just so that the head of the screw can sit there. When you get to these lower links, you still have to pull this side off no matter what so that you can put the screw in. So your little spacer, you're gonna have to remove that to put your link in. Um, and then once that's all mounted in there, again, you're all below the line of the chassis. So it's gonna be covering all that anyway. So to change your links, you gotta pull the whole thing apart, which does kind of suck, but um, there's not any other way to do it. So it just is what it is. But we're gonna go ahead and get this guy all the way here good to go and then we'll drop it our axles on and then we'll put the whole actually we'll probably put our skid in before we do our axles also gonna have to clear out just a little bit behind here i feel like the stock one is the exact same way where these links just they rub on there i don't know why traxxas made their tolerances so that the links rub on the skid plate but when it's in there it rubs when you do this so we're just going to clear out the back here a little bit and um yeah it'll make them a lot more free and this is how you want your links. You want them nice and squid or jellyfish-like. They shouldn't be sticking and staying up and the rest are, you know, swinging around. You definitely want them nice and loose. Okay. So now we'll go ahead and throw the servo on. We're going to have to snip the, the ears here on these guys. Basically, you're going to cut it right where the uh, round portion is. I don't know if you can see it very well there. There you go. That little portion right above that. If we just turn this guy off. Just like so. Okay, so it matches the middle. And then your servo mount can go right on there, like so. And then you just have to pull these diff cover screws out. And this guy can go right in there. All right, so we need to get our screw for that. And the little parts kit comes with some longer diff screws. These are the diff screws that we had. We have these long ones now to fit through the servo mount and into the diff cover. So make sure you use those. Uh, looks like they're 1.3s on the hex head. 
We're going to go ahead and run the Mia servo. Boom. Because it's blue. It's going to match our wheels. And uh, yeah, should work well. See how this guy goes. Yeah, she'll fit right in there. Perfect. I guess on this guy we'll be part of the white servo horn crew. So that'll be a thing. Probably have to trim this guy down quite a bit. We'll see where our links end up. We'll get those put together. I just gotta say, for 35 bucks. This Mias chassis is such a good value. I mean, you get the horizontal servo mount. It's plastic, but still, you get the horizontal servo mount. You get links, metal links, steering links. You get the chassis, all the hardware. I mean, 35 bucks. I mean, steering links, metal steering links are, what, 15 bucks usually? So you're paying 15 bucks for the chassis? The servo tray? Ah, I don't know. Seems like a killer deal to me. We're almost done here. All right. So when it comes to links like this, you can see how stiff they are when you first put the ball in there. See that like the link will not drop down. Like if I sit here and hold this, well, it's hard to show, but essentially the link stays positioned wherever I put it, right? It means our links are a little tight on the ball joints here. See that? Like that's stiff. Uh, uh. Okay, and same here. There's a little trick you can do. We use it in racing all the time. Because, yeah, that's, that's pretty stiff. It's not going to drop down. It needs to drop down. You can essentially take your ball, your link end here, and a pair of pliers. Actually, here we need these. And you can compress down on them a little bit. You don't want to get crazy. Just compress down on the ball joint just a little. You don't want to deform it too much, but a little bit of compression will loosen it up quite a bit. Okay. Just a little bit here. Now look, see how it's loose, right? It just falls straight down. That's what you want. You want the ball joints nice and loose. Okay. Versus being super stiff. So we'll go ahead and compress this down. And now it's nice and loose. Do a little more. Just don't want to do it so much that the ball joint just pops out. But look at that. Man, what a difference. I'm trying to hold just the ball. There we go. See that? Yeah, buddy. Versus this. Okay. Just a little tip as you're building. All right, so we're going to go ahead and put a little Loctite on our Screw here. We're going to use the blue Loctite, just a tiny bit. Always Loctite when you're going metal into metal. Don't Loctite when you're going into plastic because it will degrade your plastic and you'll have a bad day. Also, the Mias kit comes with all the hardware that you need for this front end assembly. Both link screws or knuckle screws for the links, um, as well as the servo screws. We used our own here. This screw's a little long. That's okay. Maybe we'll trim it down or dremel it down. Um, and then also the long screw here. So it comes with all the screws you need. We just ended up using our own. And the 
this guy should be set up like so. Oh, you know what? This link goes underneath. Aha! My bad. I don't know why Traxxas is set up that way. Also, our knuckles are flipped, so that's a thing. All right, we're all hooked up. I had to put a little nut on the end here because these knuckles are a little different than the stocks. The stocks are a captured piece. Um, these are just a single piece, so we switched it up a little bit. And um, yeah, should be fine. We'll see how they mount up. We usually build stuff and then make adjustments once it's built, if we need to change things or move things or whatever. Just getting that initial kind of fitment is kind of important. So that's what we do. We trimmed our horn a little bit. We're not going to screw a horn on until we center our servo. So let's go ahead and move on. I guess we'll connect our... Uh, should we drop our transmission into the chassis? I think we'll do that. Man, I love this skid. Look at how low that is. Like, that's so good. Compared to a normal skid, normal skid drops down to like here, which raises your whole chassis up. So now that this is super low, it's going to drop our chassis lower. It's going to be super nice. My only concern is going to be our shocks because now the shock towers are way lower um, and it's going to put our ride height higher. So I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Um, we might have to just run like a full droop setup so it's fully compressed or something. I don't know. Maybe do something with the shock towers or just get short shocks. I ideally, you would just get properly sized shocks, but sometimes it's hard to find the exact length you need and that's why people end up removing springs or using rubber bands or doing fixes because you can't get the exact length on the shock you want but we're gonna see where we're at i wish our transmission housing was blue but it's fury tech so we get the red we're gonna be using some next racing true reservoir shocks we have a video on these fully breaking them down right over here uh, we take the whole thing apart check them out show you what the internals show you how they work pretty cool Damn it, I opened the red ones when really I wanted the gray ones. We didn't have any blue ones, so we're going to go with gray, because gray and blue is going to look a little better than the red. We're not going to really see the red transmission because the panel's in the interior, but we will see the servo and we will see the wheels, so the gray shocks will be better, I think. Bam! We're all good. Nice and Gucci. We uh, had some rubbing, obviously, with these uh, reservoirs. We had to space them out just a little bit, just enough room for our hood to still go on. So we're good there. Uh, spacing them out gave us a little bit more room here. So now we've got little to no rubbing, essentially. It almost looks like the screw is rubbing, but barely. And then this little mount right here we had to shave just a tiny bit, there you go. Shave just a tiny bit right there because under full compression, the shock was starting to push on it and you could feel resistance that wasn't the springs, it was the shock pushing up against that mount. And now we're in a much better spot. Same with this side. Man, it's so hard to see, there you go, right there. And then under compression, it no longer rubs. So we have full articulation, full travel, no binding or resistance from anything here, except maybe a tiny bit from the screw rubbing on the chassis, which will just work itself over time. And um, maybe every once in a while, a little knock on there where uh, we trimmed it. I don't want to trim too much, but man, it feels good. I do wish we could get these just a little higher. I just want like a couple millimeters higher so it sits just a little lower. But uh, yeah, we're good. This is going to look nuts <laughs> once it's done. It's going to be so low. All right, let's get the back. All right, we got our front drive shaft in, but I actually decided I want to go ahead and put our electronics in or at least get them hooked up so I can test things. I like to test things along the way. That way I can see if there's binding in the front or the back or if there's something going on uh, versus getting it all together and then wondering what happened and having to take it all back apart. So I'm going to clean up a little bit, a little pro tip here. You can use a magnet to pick up all your loose screws. 
Yeah. All right, we got our Python Pro hooked up. We've got this uh, receiver that uses basically the FMS FuraTech uh, Power Hobby, or not Power Hobby, Hobby Plus, and uh, other random receivers and transmitters. And basically you combine those to this FuraTech one. Uh, this one that says Evo on it. It was for the Hobby Plus Evo, but it doesn't really matter. They're all the same. Um, so we're gonna use that to bind everything up and we should be good. To bind this guy, it's as pretty simple as holding the bind button, turning it on. You'll be in blinky mode. Go ahead and turn on your ESC should bind you don't see anything but then you just turn it off turn it back on and you're bound simple as that so our steering seems good let's go ahead and check some drivetrain here yeah seems fine so we don't have the most wheel speed this transmission is a 43 to 1 which is basically the lowest gearing you can go from a crawler standpoint it basically gives you the most torque the best slow crawl i mean Remember, this is a outrunner motor. Look how slow. You can't even see that they're turning, but they are. You see that? There you go. Yeah, pretty nuts, guys. So uh, if we want to get more wheel speed, we can always just change our gearing out. But uh, this motor is pretty nuts. We've got a video on this motor in um, kind of a rock bouncer. We'll put that over here. It's in the uh, FearTech Olympus using FCX 24 axles, and that thing just hauls butt. It's so crazy how fast it is, and still got good slow crawl. Pretty nuts. So, uh, yeah, so we look good here. We'll get into the app and dive deeper into the ESC here in a little bit, um, but I'm going to get the thing together. Go ahead and try our rear drive shaft and make sure there's no binding there, but I think we're good. Yeah. So before we go, I actually want to show you this as well. This guy can run on 3S, and the Python, in fact, can run on 4S. Uh, not so sure on the Cedar, but the Python is definitely 4S capable. Oh, you get a lot more real speed there. So maybe this will be a 3S-er. Probably be a 3S-er. Once you go 3S, it's kind of hard to go back. <laughs> All right, you can see how we're kind of going to lay out our electronics here. I had to dremel down this case just a little bit. There's a screw so we that pokes out right there. And so we dremeled out this just a little bit to make room for the screw and then shave the sides just a little so that it fits a little bit nicer in there. Um, doesn't want to just pop out because now we've got a little bit of room. So that'll be pretty slick. And then we're going to put our battery on the other side. And yeah, we should be golden. Should be golden. I'm going to get her all mounted in there. And then uh, we'll come back. So I've decided that I need uh, a little bit larger tires here so I can get some extra clearance. So we've got these DJ crawlers. These guys are ginormous. They're 68 millimeters. They are bigger. There's some 70s. But this is what we have. And I think they look cool. And I don't really want to go too big because we already, with the 60s, 68, sorry, they kind of, they're going to rub um, so we're gonna have to turn down our dual rate a little bit, but should be cool. They give us a little bit more clearance right here. So we're doing that, and uh, these are 1.0s, but our wheels are 1.2s, so we're having to trim them. Let's see here, I've got some trimming remnants. Also, these wheels all came with aluminum inner rings. However, I do have some other Mias 1.2s that have brasses. So I'm taking two of the brass rings and we put those in the front. So these two have brass rings in them. The rears are going to have aluminum rings in them, but they work just fine. So I'm going to go ahead and keep the aluminum ring though, since this is a rear. Like I said, these two fronts are going to have that extra little weight bias by having aluminum in the rear and brass in the front. Also, the DJ crawlers came with two different density foams. So like a more stiff foam and then a soft foam. And you can physically see the difference between the two. Okay, this is more dense and this is definitely more squishy. What we're doing is we're gonna put the 
uh, dense foams in the front since it's going to be more heavy in the front and then use the kind of soft barely foams because these really don't add a whole ton you can already see on this side they're way more floppy and squishy versus these are a lot more stiff okay i mean we still have squish but they're definitely stiff more stiff for the sidewalls what that's going to do with our rear being really almost like no foams is it kind of gives a pseudo underdrive in the rear so it lets them kind of slide when we're making turns and lets lets me pull the rear end around as we're pulling up stuff it'll kind of drag it a little bit better so at least that's my thought we'll see how it does if it sucks then we'll put stiff foams in there or maybe at some point we'll get flubs um we'll have to get some something custom for the 1.2s but yeah i figured we have two different dense density foams we might as well try the softer foams in the rear and uh see what happens to trim this guy, pretty simple. You literally just flip it inside out and I'm just cutting the bead off. I'm not going any further, just enough to basically cut the bead off in this little tiny lip. And then that still gives us a good amount of material that the tire or the wheel will um, clamp down onto. Okay. Doesn't have to be perfect, just has to be close and you don't want to overcut. You can always cut off more if you need to cut off more. Um, but if you cut off too much, it's not going to stay beaded. You're basically going to keep pulling your tire out of your wheel. So definitely, definitely um, be a little conservative when cutting these just to make sure that you have enough to keep the, uh, keep the tire nice and locked in. And every tire and wheel combo is going to be a little different because it depends on how tight that wheel gets, depends on how thick the tire is. So you just have to kind of be, be careful and work slow. Luckily, my first cut on the first one I did, it worked just fine. It fit and um, I didn't need to trim it anymore. And so I've been, just been doing the same cut on all of them. But if I would have gone too far, it might have had an issue slipping out of the, the locked wheel. All right. Our foams, again, we have to stretch them a little bit to get them to fit over the ring because they're meant for a 1.0, but it works fine. Okay. And then to help this uh, just slip in nice and smooth and be able to move things around, I usually will get this a little wet or use some spit or some water. I'm just going to go ahead and lube it up, if you will, and then this will just slide right in, no problem. except for when I'm hitting on the ring. There we go. Okay. We're going to do the same on the back. We'll just tuck this guy in there. And that allows us to be able to like spin the rear ring so that we can line up our holes. Okay, there we go. We should be good. Whenever you're tightening down the rings on these, always do it in a star pattern across, across, just like a real, a real wheel when you're putting it on the, the hub. And I generally don't tighten them all the way down until they're all in. I just get them just a little snug. And then once they're all in, I can go do a final kind of tighten and make sure that they're all as snug as I need them to be. Don't want to over tighten. Don't want to break off any screws. But there we go. Boom. And then our beads nice and tucked. We're not pulling out. Giggity. And we're uh, we're good to go now. All right. Bam. So that'll be good. Get a little extra clearance. Um, I did see there's some very flat like wafer screws. I might end up picking up some of those. I don't know. I only need the two. So kind of sucks having to make a whole order, but I could probably use them in the future. 
but some like really flat wafer head screws it'll give us like a quarter millimeter you know of extra clearance i could also try to dremel these down just a little bit and take out a little bit out of the c-hub i just don't want to weaken the c-hub um, but it would not be nice just to get these just a little bit a little bit higher because they do sit very low i mean we could take quite a chunk out of these on the side here basically at this point right here but this is where it's really going to hit and most of this is going to be on a pretty smooth surface so so I also grinded down a little bit on this ball joint here and here on the bottoms to get the screw to sit in just a little bit. Again, it's just a minor amount of uh, difference, but it does give us just a little bit more clearance. And then I did the same thing here on the drag link. Um, I dropped it in, shaved this down a little, shaved the top down a little. That allowed me a little bit shorter screw so I didn't have a bunch of extra thread showing. Now it fits perfect. And I can use a shorter screw over here as well. Um, it also drops this down just a little um, by, you know, the half millimeter or whatever. And that gives us a little bit extra body clearance because the body rails sit right on here or the chassis rails. Um, so dropping that down a little bit will just give us just a little bit more uh, clearance and whatnot. And, and all those little things start to add up. You take a half millimeter off here, a half millimeter off of part of the chassis, you know, move this in just a little bit. We trim that down in. Um, that gives us clearance on our front bumper from, behind, you know, behind the bumper. And you start to make all these little little tiny trims and then you get a lot more clearance and freedom of movement and whatnot so that's why we're doing it we got some paint on we got some trim on for our rear links you can see here we'll get it together and you'll really see it but boom we even uh took a little bit of reshaping here so we reshaped these so they dropped back just a little bit basically heated them up and melted them a little but pushed them back so that hopefully we can get a little bit of extra tire clearance. Probably not much, probably won't matter at all, but uh, could help a little bit. See that, yeah, 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 maybe, maybe a little. We'll see, let's get her back installed. We've got all the electronics installed back in now. Cleaned up our wires a little. We shortened the uh, headlight wires. There's like a big I don't know, the, the board that controls the LEDs is right here. It's about this big. So that's tucked under there. Hopefully the motor doesn't get too hot and mess with that. But if it does, we can always move it if we notice that. And then, um, yeah, got our light bar hooked up and everything's all kind of wrapped up. What we like to do to wrap these up is we'll take the cable and we'll take this, you know, something long and we'll, we'll do this number here. And we'll make it nice and tight tight coil and then uh, take a lighter and just kind of heat it real quick just to kind of reset the uh, the plastic you know the sheath on the the wire to help help it maintain its coiling shortens up the wires and then uh, always gives you the ability if you end up moving stuff or whatever to still have length so it's not an exact length because uh, it sucks when you cut something to exact length plug it in, you're good to go. And then later you decide, oh, I want to change my arrangement and it won't reach to the new spot. You have to rewire the whole the whole piece, whether it's the servo or lights or ESC or whatever. So I like to try to leave just a little bit of extra length. We still shorten them, but leave enough length and then coil it up to shorten it up a little bit more um, to get it just a little bit tighter and cleaner in there. Okay, got a interior sort of painted up a little bit. We're gonna clean it up some more. Um, get some black, actual black to paint the bottom and clean up where we kind of overflowed a little. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do with that. I'm not the biggest on painting. I love awesome paint jobs. I just, I'm not, I'm not good at it. I don't have the patience, I guess. Um, even this guy started working on it before it was totally dry and got some fingerprints on there, but kind of rubbed them down and we should be good. You can kind of still see it, but in, you can see it better on the camera actually than you can in real life. Anyway, um, yeah, I think we're gonna have to trim our hood and side panels just a little bit. We're gonna have a ton of rubbing. So I'm not sure what I'm gonna do there yet. Probably trim this out some more. I don't know, I kinda wanna keep the fender. I don't know, we'll see, we'll see. Maybe maybe we won't trim it. We'll drive it around a little bit and then uh, later we'll trim it if it is rubbing just too much while we're running. Uh, let's plug it in, let's see how we're, how we're doing here. Battery wire. And the battery's gonna go inside. Right. Turn on our remote. Turn on our truck. There we go. Boom. 
lights. Now with this transmitter and receiver, for some reason our channel four doesn't actually switch our lights. So we set our lights to blue, plugged it into channel four, and then our light bar will have changeable. Um, Cause I might as well just leave these on blue always, but they do change different colors and whatnot. Um, just for some reason, channel four is not working. When I hit the channel four, it just shuts them off and they don't turn back on no matter what I do. So yeah, either way, pretty cool setup, I think. I love the light bar. It's so fun. They're not even expensive. They're on Amazon. You can pick them up. We could have done a Y splitter, but then they never sync up. Like if I want them both off, I have to like sit there and switch it forever until they hit that combination. Because if this has like six modes and this has nine modes, you have to do it like 50 times before it matches back up to the same mode, like off or whatever. Anyway, so I don't want to mess with that. We're just going to leave them blue. Tons of turn radius, but I don't think we're going to take it, be able to take advantage of that because we're going to be rubbing quite a bit. See? So let me get the panels on and um, yeah, should be good. Here's that back part. Okay. Now we actually didn't need to cut this out because our links were barely hit. They were hitting. We could have just dremeled the underneath part and cleaned it up just a little bit so we wouldn't hit it all. But I think I want to get some three flow nine link risers for the rear to help us with our anti-dive or anti-squat, excuse me. Um, and that'll raise it up just a little bit. And then um, we'll be glad we have our cutout here and our links will come through just a tad. So yeah, when we get that, I'll be glad I did that and didn't have to repaint it. Let's get the body panels on. All done. We'll put done in quotes because they're never done, right guys? Yeah, buddy. So I trimmed um, one coil off of the shock here. You can see there's a trimmed coil. So trimmed coils on each shock just to help lower it just a little bit. Um, I wish there were some different shock spring options for these because I would definitely like something a little, a little softer. I might have to look and see if I've got stuff in my bag of shock springs. Most of them are smaller diameter though for like the SCX or the FCX, but we'll maybe take a look. Let's go ahead and plug this guy in. I'm just going to use an SCX24 battery because that's what the plug is on here. Gets in there nice and snug. Our interior just drops in. Maybe like so. Right. Well, we can keep our battery on the inside, but yeah, it's looking good. Tons of great power on the servo. And that slow crawl is just nuts. Look at that. Remember, this is an in runner. It's a waterproof in runner. So crazy how good it is slow. It's fantastic. You can see we've got a little bit of rubbing happening, but actually not so bad in forward. It's drivable under full lock, which is good. Don't even have the dual rate turned down. Um, under reverse, it's going to be rough. It's going to tuck like that, but it's working. We did trim just the tiniest bit right here, just a tiny, tiny bit. Um, most of it's hitting on this part of the chassis, though. You can see that's where it hits especially when the suspension is compressed. But anyway, pretty freaking sweet. I'm digging it. I dig how low it is. Again, meant for sandstone and rock. A little softer in the back than the front. 
Should give us some cool driving characteristics. Yeah, guys. Loving it. Loving it. Loving it. I just look so mean. We got some good articulation, too. Probably a little bit more than I would normally do. But look at that. Seems all right. All right, let's try to get some running video here.
All right, guys, hope you enjoyed that build video and some of that running footage. I know we weren't doing like the craziest, hardest lines, but um, some of those were actually very steep. It just doesn't convey in video because the rocks are so smooth and flowy. You can't really tell kind of the angle it's at. Um, but I tried to tried to show it as much as I could uh, just to kind of convey. It's got some pretty good incline, so um, it was doing pretty good. Also, I was tired. <laughs> I had just shot the LC80 running footage as well, so... Um, you can check out that video over here on the new FCX uh, 18 LC80. Pretty cool truck, especially for the price. Killer, killer deal. But this guy, yeah, just uh, it's fun. Like that. That's I built it for me. I built it because I, I wanted to do something different. I wanted to do something that would be fun to run out on those rocks. That's not like everything else I have. I mean, this uh, flipped axle thing has gotten a lot of hate in the pictures I've shown. There's, a, I mean, you always get hate when you do something different, but it is what it is. I like it. It does what I want it to do. It's super low center of gravity. It looks cool. I love the way it looks. Um, yeah, there's, it's just, you know, obviously you don't usually flip the portals. Not many people do, if ever. I think I'm the first to ever do it on one of these minis like this. Um, so yeah, I mean, no, no, monster truck. I think Matt from 2FM has done it on a monster truck, but when it comes to a crawler, you obviously usually don't do that, but because we have sandstone, I wanted to, and I thought it would work well, and I think it does work well. So, um, the only downside, uh, to flipping portals other than, you know, losing clearance is your in kingpin inclination. And that is, it's hard to, it's hard to tell, but see how the kingpins sit here. And the top one is further out than the bottom one. The reason that is, is because normally on the bottom, you want the bottom one further out and it helps your turning, right? So it actually will dig the tire down. So as you're coming up on a rock and your tire turns, you turn, this one turning inward actually kind of folds down, right? Because of the angle of the kingpins, it pushes it down. Um, and then when you go this way, this one goes down. The problem is when you flip your kingpin uh, or you, when you flip your portals, now they go up, right? So when I turn, you can see it goes up. And then when I have it go this way, it goes down. Going down is kind of nice because it does give us better clearance. We rub less, um, but it does mean it's harder for it to like turn and hook as you're pulling yourself up. So it just means you have to hit lines kind of differently. And um, it's just not ideal. I wish I could kind of change that or at least have it more neutral because this is a pretty extreme kingpin inclination is what they call it. Um, but uh, yeah, KPI. So if I could have it a little bit more neutral versus so extreme, that would be nice. But I do like that it, it, it tucks down, right? Definitely helps give us extra clearance. Uh, so that's cool. But I just wanted to kind of throw this guy together. This is one of the, uh, obviously one of the plastic chassis, not one of the aluminums. We do have a couple of those. We're going to build those up as well. Um, yeah, Mias wheels. Mias drive shafts, Mias servo, digging all that. The Opie factory flat skid. This is a must if you want to lower your center of gravity and tuck that TRX4M skid up in there. Definitely check that out. The next racing oil filled shocks are just killer, guys. Uh, they're just awesome. And then obviously the Furitech Electronics torpedo setup, sick. <laughs> Absolutely sick. Uh, we've got the all metal gear trans. That's why it's a little loud in the running video. It, you might have been able to eat and hear it here. That's because it's all metal gears, all metal. So that's that's what you get when you get all metal gears. Nothing you can do about it. Anyway, guys, uh, we did trim a little bit more here. I don't know if you can see that. We kind of took a little bit more of the fender out. But, yeah, it is what it is. It's fun. I'm going to probably tweak and tune a little bit. I think I want to get the anti-squat here uh, on the back. Might need to add a little weight to the rear because it is kind of forward heavy. You notice whenever I'd go down, it would kind of tumble. So... Definitely need to get some extra weight, I think, just a little bit on the back. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll play with it. It's fun. Uh, thanks again for watching. Thanks to all the members, the channel members that are subscribed. I guess it's not really all the channel members that are members. Thanks to all the subscribers that are subscribers. But the channel members, uh, it's basically a thing where you can sign up and you pay a little monthly and you get different tiers based on what you are. We have brushed, we have sensorless brushless, and censored brushless. Uh, as the highest tier, highest tier, you get stickers every month and um, extra entries when we do giveaways and things like that. Speaking of giveaways, we also do entries for people that are sporting our swag 
uh, in any photos when we do those big giveaways. When we hit 10,000 subs, we're going to do another giveaway for an RTR, um, one of the minis, probably under 200 bucks again. Uh, the last guy won an FC or an FX 118, the new Fear Tech brushless. That's what he ended up chosen. So I got that out to him. His name is Rick. Um, awesome, awesome subscriber. He uh, he's also uh, sent in a bunch of photos of his rig and him wearing a shirt. He had picked up a shirt, I believe, if I remember right. But he also had made a custom livery that had our logo in the livery, and, and that was uh, the photos he sent in. So when we do uh, giveaways, we do stuff like that. Anyway, I'm kind of ranting here. This is already a long video. Figure, hey, you'll, if you've already watched an hour, you'll probably watch another five minutes and be talking about stuff. Um, so yeah, definitely pick up swag, though, if you want to help support the channel. Uh, it, we don't make any money on it, really, like a dollar for a shirt, maybe two dollars for hoodies. Uh, just enough so we don't have to keep changing their prices, because they always change their prices. And so when they raise their prices by five cents and have to go in and change it, it's super annoying. So I just make it like a dollar, dollar fifty, two dollars, and that's as low as I can get it for the most part. Um, and so it's just to help spread the word, support the channel, show your love. Uh, if you become a channel member, like I said, we send out stickers, and you get to view videos early, and uh, no, with no ads. Whenever I post a video, I leave it up for a while before I make it public, um, unless it's a time-sensitive video. And then there's also member-only videos where I do kind of behind-the-scenes stuff and show new things and. Uh, just random different stuff like that. And I always answer member uh, questions first and comments first. So yeah, why don't you go ahead and put down in the comments below since you made it this far, flip those portals. Flip those portals, put it down so I know you watched the whole video. Um, and if you did, you're awesome. You are uh, one of my favorite types of viewers. The people that watch the whole video all the way to the end, you, you're the best. You you know, I just can't say enough. I know that you're loving me, right? Like, maybe it's a bromance. I don't know. Maybe not. I'm <laughs> just kidding. Anyway, uh, I'll probably cut that out. I probably won't. I'll probably leave it in there. I'm tired right now. We've done a whole bunch of videos. I've got more coming. It's late. And, um... <laughs> yeah, I think I'm getting delirious right now. We've been doing videos. We've been like just cranking them out the past couple days. And so I'm running on very little sleep. Anyway, guys, enough. Enough is enough. Thanks again. Make sure you like, subscribe, share, hit that notification bell. Do all those things you do at the end of videos that you like and channels you want to support. And uh, then get out there, build a car, a course, and a community. That's what we're about, trying to build things, make this hobby better, make it bigger, get more people involved, and then crash it, bash it, and smash it or... uh crawl bash race because we do all those things and uh get out there just just have fun with it guys build something crazy build something that people are going to say that's stupid and then laugh at them and just be like it's not yours not your money go build what you want buddy peace mm -hmm.